Dear friends, as we meet to celebrate the birth of Christ, let us pray that God will bless this church and this crib, that all who worship his Son, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, may come to share his life in glory. God our Father, on this night your Son Jesus Christ was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary for us and for our salvation. Bless this crib, which we have prepared to celebrate that holy birth. May all who see it be strengthened in faith and receive the fullness of life he came to bring, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us stand and remain standing, if we're able, to sing the final verse of O Come All Ye Faithful, Yea, Lord, we greet thee. Would you please be seated as we light the final candle on our Advent wreath, praying, Lord Jesus Christ, light of light, you have come among us. Help us to live by your light and shine as lights in your world. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Welcome to St. Mary's on this holy Christmas night. My name is Alec, I'm the Rector of East Barnet, and it's a privilege to celebrate the Christmas season with you all. It's also very reassuring to know that our new fire alarm system is fully working, <laughs> especially as this is Roy's first time working the thurible and providing us with incense so we know that both he is working and the fire alarm is fully operable. As we come with the shepherds before the newborn Christ child to worship with them at his crib, 
we open our hearts to his coming in love among us today. We say together, Lord our God, in sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes early away. Have mercy upon us. Deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you wish to, would you please stand as we sing a hymn of glory to God, Ding Dong Merrily on High. Eternal God, who made this most holy night to shine with the brightness of your one true light. Bring us who have known the revelation of that light on earth to see the radiance of your heavenly glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated as Andy reads to us from the Holy Scriptures. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your sentinels lift up their voices. Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, 
you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people, he has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. This is the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. 
And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Henry Moore's wartime dark grey pencil sketches, drawn from huddled life as seen in London's air raid shelters, and hard labour as conscripted into Castleford's coal pits, everyone and everything is trapped, deep in cramped, dominating darkness. Even in Pit Boys at Pit Head, which you can see at the moment in an exhibition in the St Albans Museum, even in Pit Boys at Pit Head, which was a sketch of four miners drawn in the daytime and above ground, the darkness of coal dust and dirt still covered the scene the miners, the spoil heaps in the background, the ashen sky, were all overcast by it. And yet in this sketch, the artist managed to discern and to gently trace out the contours and the contrasts of the faces to show the stark and simple dignity that lay in the appearances of the four men. An artistic eloquence made possible, perhaps, by a connection and a mutual understanding between the artist and their subject. For Henry Moore was a coal miner's son. He had shared their experience of life down in the dark. His use of dark grey pencil against tiny, very small fragments of white paper showed such lightness of human character to still be alive in and underneath the dark of coal dust and dirt. Thanks to the light of Moore's insight, he made visible to all those who viewed these drawings all the details of survival, labor, strain and fear, all the harsh reality of life experienced down in the dark. Such was the reality that marked, but did not eclipse the humanity of all those who endured it. In Renaissance portraits showing the Christ child, the contrast between darkness and light was often heightened to an extreme by a golden glow of glory surrounding the child's crib. Rather like our crib this evening, although this is illuminated by halogen bulbs. Sometimes in Renaissance portrait, the crib, in contrast, was burnished with real gold leaf. This threw the rest of the scene into shadow. And whatever else was there could hardly be discerned by the viewer behind layers of dusky oil paint and heavy varnish. One Renaissance image of the Christ child by Giet and Tot St. Jans, is set at night. Yet the child themselves shone so brightly, almost like a plug-in nightlight in a child's room, that he himself allowed the artist to see and clearly show the loving and adoring faces that surrounded him. The face of his mother, and the faces and wings of the gathering of angels, which were flooded by his reflected glory, so that they too stood luminous against the backdrop of this gloomy stable scene. All the delicacy of respect for new life, and all the hope for flourishing, fulfillment, and peace, 
are visible in their brightened faces and would have been very clearly seen by the owners of this devotional image. For by the Christ child's light, those who gazed upon it could see the scene of his birth. And by implication, they could view the world beyond the stable and the frame also, view each other's faces as if they were illuminated by his glory, even against a backdrop of darkness. The first, most poetic chapter of the Gospel of John depicts a light shining in and into darkness, a light that came into the world when the Word of God, who created all worlds, became human flesh in the person of Jesus. The light of which John writes illuminates and enlightens all those who receive God's word in his, in our shared human flesh. In such light, true humanity can be seen, for Jesus shone with it, to share it with us too. In such light, we can learn how to see ourselves and others as dignified and humane, as bathed and cleansed in the presence of the lightening humanity of Jesus, being drawn up out of the darkness to be sustained and held in the light by him. In such light, we are also able to shine within the reflected glory of the word's divinity. There is great power, a high voltage, in John's written image of a light that shines in darkness, by which we see what we ought to be, see how we might become, and see from where all our hope and salvation comes. The light of Christ inspires us so that we may see the true humanity of all people and fight for its recognition, so that we may awake in the darkness to the pursuit of justice and peace, so that we may understand the world's nature and beauty more truly and safeguard them. The light of Christ inspires us to find and kindle other lights in the world around us, and by their brightening also to resist all the powers of darkness in this world. On this dark night, and in many other times and places of darkness, let us continue to learn how we might see all things by the light of Christ's glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Amen. If you wish to, would you please stand? A very happy Christmas to you all. Would you please join with me in saying together words that confess our faith in light that comes in the midst of darkness, in love that comes in the midst of fear, in God's own power of salvation and joy. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated as we share in a time of prayer for the needs of the world to which Christ comes. When I say Jesus Saviour, please respond, hear our prayer. Let us pray to Jesus, our Saviour, here. Christ, born in a stable, give courage to all who are homeless. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, for whom the angels sang, give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, before whom the wise men knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, Give the glory of your resurrection to all who rest in you. Jesus, Saviour. Jesus, Saviour, child of Mary, you know us and love us. You share our lives and hear our prayer. Glory to you forever. Amen. Amen. Father, in this holy night, angels and shepherds worshipped at the manger throne. Receive the worship which we offer in fellowship with Mary, Joseph, and the saints. Through him who is, who is your word made flesh, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. If you wish to, would you please stand? Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign and a word of Christ's peace this Christmas. Peace be with you, and happy Christmas. Our next carol is It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. 
Gracious God, accept our gifts, 
and with them our lives for your service, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who for the love of our fallen race humbled himself and on this night was born of the Virgin Mary. By the power of your Spirit, and lived as one of us. In this mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused his light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. In him we see our God made visible, and so are caught up in the love of the God we cannot see. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voice to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once of the sins of the whole world, Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, 
and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Joseph and all the saints and angels, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. taught us. So we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. All are welcome at this feast of Christ's holy table. And so if you have been baptised and prepared to receive communion in this or any other Christian church, I pray that on this holy night you will share with me in signs of God's love for you in the form of bread and wine. If you'd like to be baptised, then I hope that you'll speak to me after our service, late as it is. And if you would prefer instead to receive a blessing, I hope that you will let me know that's what you are seeking as you come to the place in front of this table where I will be distributing the bread.
light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace.
God our Father, whose word has come among us in the Holy Child of Bethlehem. May the light of faith illumine our hearts and shine in our words and deeds through him who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Let us say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me here at St. Mary's to celebrate Christmas. Please come back soon to sing more carols, to join more deeply in the celebration of this holy season, and because we still have a great stock of Christmas chocolate to get through. <laughs> if you wish to, would you please stand for a blessing and to sing our final carol, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Merry Christmas. <laughs>